if you're gonna go visit Makoshka, I mean, like, I highly encourage you to visit it, period. But if you can, like, either get up early and get there at sunrise or, like, you know, wait a little bit later and be there at sunset because the colors were amazing. Lighting has so much to do with how we perceive the world, you know. Light is amazing. <laughs> In May 2016, I made a decision to quit my job and hit the road for two and a half months. In total, I did 6,700 miles. I was gone for 70 days. This was my pilgrimage. Today is day 17 on the pilgrimage. I left Glendive on day 16. So I took the back way, which is the side road, farm road, that basically goes to Fallon. And then from there, it's paved until you hit Highway 320 which is actually loose gravel until you get down to Mildred, which is actually pretty awesome. Mildred has a lot of abandoned buildings, which was super cool, and it looked like there was only like two families living in that town. There's no stores or anything, but there's a lot of abandoned buildings, and I think it should be considered a ghost town because it was super cool. And that's the amount of old buildings that I would expect to see at a town that was marked as a ghost town, you know? Right after Mildred, the highway highway went from loose gravel to this nice, hard, compact red dirt, which was awesome to ride on, so I could go about 50, but Lazarus is covered in a very thick layer of red dirt all over. Hi, B. How are you doing? Don't sting me. Please? Thank you. Okay. I was so excited to see pavement. I rode for almost three and a half, four hours on dirt all day, which I mean, like I love old dirt roads, but it just come, it becomes kind of stressful and hard on the body because you're tense the whole time. So I almost got off the bike and kissed the pavement when I got to Highway 12. By then I was starting to run low on gas. My marker was already pointing at empty. I made it all the way to Plevna before she just lost power and sputtered and was like, can't go without the go juice. I walked to the bar. I went into the bartender was like, please, please tell me there's a gas station in your town. And she's like, ha, no. This man named Bob was sitting at the bar and was listening when I asked the lady if there was a gas station and mentioned that he had a little bit of gas left in a little can that he had for his lawnmower. And I was like, well, all I need is a gallon, really, because Baker was 12 miles away at that point and they had gas station. He went to his house, which conveniently was right across the street from the bar, and got his little can, and it turned out to only be about half a gallon of gas. And I was like, that works. That will get me to Baker. And so we drove back out to the bike and put the gas in, and I had like a nice little chat with him. He grew up in Rosebud. He's lived in eastern Montana his whole life. Just talking about how beautiful eastern Montana is, and it's amazing to watch the big clouds come in because they're huge and there's nothing to block your view of them. So they start from the horizon and like just take up the whole sky. It's amazing. The wind definitely gets exhausting after a little while. Anyway, he went back into town and then I couldn't get the bike started again. So I was sitting down next to the bike, checking the air filter, making sure that all of my hoses were connected when this other truck pulled up. I'm like, well, I ran out of gas, I put gas in it, and now she's not starting. And she looked at her husband and was just like, he has bikes, he's gonna help you. And he's like, Ugh. So he got out and like pulled the vacuum line off, sucked on it so that the carbs would fill up. But she started right up. Nice people in Eastern Montana. Although I guess, you know, you kind of have to be nice and helpful when you're outnumbered by livestock 20 to one. Everybody I've met in Eastern Montana has been nothing but helpful. I haven't met anybody who's mean or anything like that or rude. I um, made it to Baker, put gas in the bike, rode around town for a minute, you know, deciding whether or not I was going to stop and eat something. Decided against it and hit the road again. So I ended up in Medicine Rock State Park at 8, which was plenty of time to set up my tent and then wander around and take some photos while the sun was setting. And it was beautiful and almost mystical here at sunset. This place gets a little eerie once the, once it gets dark. And I mean like the rocks don't whistle or anything, but the wind coming through the little corridors and rubbing up against the rocks, it's like a crowd is whispering almost. It's amazing though, it's very peaceful. You know, another one of those I highly encourage you to make it out here. 
I met a lot of people on the way down here who, you know, this is within half a day's drive for them and they've never been here. It's crazy how you can live in one place for your for most of your life and not ever see the surrounding area, basically. What are you doing? What do you do on the weekends? What are you what are you doing with your life? Not that I have a lot of room to talk. There are lots of places in the bitter that I I haven't been. But Medicine Rocks is a state park. It's not like just like a little creek up the mountain or something like that. You got Montana state plates. You don't have to pay to get in or anything. You think I'm going to head towards the Billings area now. What is the day? Today is July 2nd, is Saturday. And so that makes Monday, 4th of July. This is the farthest east that I will be in Montana. So it's all downhill from here, making my way back to the valley. I'm excited for the second half of this trip because all of the super cool things I want to see are in the second half. Like I'm going to hit pictograph caves. Not to mention I get to see Casey in Billings. I'm super excited about that. I haven't seen him since high school. First half of the trip, check. Second half to begin. People whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States. Also, do you like my new hat? I lost my Jack Daniels hat while I was in circle. I don't know where it is. And I told Josh, he just gave me a nap hat. Nap berets hat too. Those are hard to get nowadays. I have to add my Jack Daniels hat to the list of things that I've lost on this trip. <laughs> Did a good job. Just leaving crap everywhere. Always check if the Wi-Fi works before you pay.